Is there a line between evil and insanity? Can we truly comprehend the minds of those who commit heinous acts? These questions have puzzled psychologists, criminologists and philosophers for centuries. Today we're taking a dark journey into the lives of eight individuals. Leave us a comment and tell us which crimes shocked you the most. Our first stop is Omaha, Nebraska, home to Nico Jenkins, a man whose crimes shocked a nation. Born into a family steeped in crime, Jenkins's fate seemed almost inevitable. Nico Allen Jenkins is an American spree killer who was convicted of perpetrating four murders in Omaha, Nebraska during August 2013. These killings took place shortly after his release from prison, where he had served ten and a half years of an 18-year sentence for a carjacking he committed at the age of 15, along with assaults that occurred while incarcerated. Jenkins claimed that the murders were carried out under the directive of the ancient serpent deity, Apophis. Despite his claims of hearing voices compelling him to kill, many questioned the authenticity of his alleged psychosis. He was deemed fit to stand trial, found guilty of the four homicides, and subsequently received a death sentence in May 2017. These chilling murders, marked by their sheer savagery, took four innocent lives and left Omaha in a state of terror. Next, we venture into the twisted world of Charles Manson, a man whose name is synonymous with evil. Born to a troubled teenage mother, Manson's early life was marked by neglect and a string of petty crimes. His life took a darker turn in the late 60s when he formed the Manson family, a cult-like commune. Manson, a charismatic and manipulative figure, convinced his followers that a divisive war which he termed Helter Skelter was imminent. In an attempt to hasten this apocalypse, Manson orchestrated a series of gruesome murders, including the infamous killing of actress Sharon Tate. His ability to manipulate his followers into committing these heinous acts truly set Manson apart as a figure of terror. Incarcerated for life, Manson continued to bewitch and befuddle, his very name becoming a byword for the chilling power of mind control. Next we turn to Troy Kell, a man who hid in plain sight. Kell received a death sentence in Utah, for a brutal attack on a fellow inmate in 1994. Earlier, he had been sentenced to life without parole in Nevada for shooting a man six times in 1986. Later, he was transferred to Utah State Prison in Gunnison through a prisoner exchange program. The incident occurred on July 6, 1994, while Kell was being escorted with three other inmates to a medical clinic. Another inmate passed Kell a handcuff key, enabling him to remove his restraints. Subsequently, Kell viciously attacked Lonnie Blackman, stabbing him 67 times with a makeshift weapon. Prison surveillance footage captured Kell celebrating the assault. Blackman tragically lost his life. Convicted of aggravated murder in 1996, prosecutors argued that the killing was racially motivated and planned. Kell testified that Blackman had threatened his life. Despite appeals, including claims of an unfair trial, the Utah Supreme Court rejected Kell's appeal in 2008. In 2011, another appeal claimed ineffective counsel during the last appeal, but the Utah Supreme Court upheld the lower court's denial in 2012. Our journey continues with Randy Kraft. Randy Kraft earned the nickname The Scorecard Killer due to his meticulous record-keeping of victims, including coded entries. Police suspect Kraft's involvement in possibly more than 60 murders of men in California during the 1970s and 1980s. He's also linked to a group termed by law enforcement as the Freeway Killers. Three serial killers who operated in close proximity shared similar methods and overlapped in their active periods. His reign of terror spanned nearly a decade, from the late 70s to the mid-80s. The jury delivered a death verdict on August 11, 1989. Three months after, on November 29th, Judge McCartin officially imposed the death sentence upon Kraft. This sentence was affirmed by the California Supreme Court on August 9th, 2000. From the calculating to the silent, we now delve into the life of Arthur Brown Jr., a man whose silence was deadly. Arthur Brown was found guilty of the execution-style killing of four individuals in a Houston residence in 1992. Court records indicate that Brown, along with two partners, unlawfully entered the house, restrained six individuals using bedsheets, and dispersed them into separate rooms. Each of the four victims was fatally shot in the back of the head, while two others managed to survive the ordeal. One of the victims, Jessica Quinones, aged 19, was seven months pregnant at the time of the tragic incident. 
Brown was apprehended four months after the crime and remained on death row for over 30 years. He was finally executed in March of 2023. Next, we explore the double life of Stephen Dale Barbie, a man who hid his darkness behind a facade of normalcy. Barbie was sentenced for the killings of Lisa Underwood, aged 34, and her son Jaden in February 2005. Both victims were suffocated at their Fort Worth residence and subsequently discovered buried in a shallow grave in Denton County nearby. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles unanimously declined to commute Barbie's death sentence to a lesser penalty or to grant a four-month reprieve. Barbie, 55, was executed at the Texas State Penitentiary at Huntsville after spending over 17 years on death row. Next, we journey to the picturesque landscapes of Yosemite, forever marred by the actions of Carrie Stainer. Born into an unassuming family, Stainer's life took a chilling turn as he began to commit heinous acts against the backdrop of this natural wonderland. Carrie Anthony Stainer, born on August 13, 1961, is an American serial killer known as the Yosemite Park Killer or simply the Yosemite Killer. He's the elder brother of Stephen Stainer, who was a kidnapping victim. Stainer was found guilty of killing four women between February and July 1999 in Mariposa County, California, close to Yosemite National Park. As a result, he received a death sentence for these four murders and remains on death row at San Quentin State Prison in California. His actions were a grotesque juxtaposition of the beauty surrounding him a horrifying blend of brutality set against nature's peaceful canvas. Next is David Joseph Carpenter, born on May 6, 1930, known as the Trailside Killer, is an American serial killer infamous for targeting and murdering numerous people on hiking trails situated in state parks near San Francisco, California. In 1960, Carpenter committed his initial attempted murder, targeting Lois Rinna, who later became the mother of television personality Lisa Rinna. This led to a seven-year prison sentence. In 1970, he faced arrest for kidnapping, serving another seven-year sentence. Following his release, Carpenter became a suspect in the Zodiac murders. However, he was later absolved of involvement. His victims totaled at least ten individuals, resulting in convictions for seven murders. An eighth murder was confirmed to be his doing, while Carpenter is also suspected in two other killings. Among those attacked Stephen Hurtle and Lois Rena, the mother of television personality Lisa Rena survived the assaults. After decades in prison, David Carpenter still denies committing the murders. Please like this video if you enjoyed our stories.